Hey, welcome friends uh, to another session on sequence and series. We have uh, seen in the previous sessions what sequence and series are and we had started analyzing one type of uh, sequences that is which can be represented as a you know or which in the nth term of which can be expressed as a function of n isn't it in the last session we saw an example related to that so uh, i would request if you have not seen that it will be uh, important to go through all those previous sessions to get a thorough understanding of whatever we are doing in this session now uh, we have been given a you know sequence like that which is 2 5 10 17 26 and 37 and the idea is the objective in this session is to find out if we can figure out a generic formula tn for nth term of this sequence meaning thereby if let's say someone asks me to find out a hundredth term in this sequence then do i have a direct formula I don't want to really, you know, uh, find out a trend over here and then go on finding out each and every element of this sequence and what we call as brute force method. Yes, it is possible, but it will take a lot of time unnecessarily. And if someone asks me, let's say 10,000th term in this, then it will be futile to even work it out on one by one basis. So do I have a formula to represent any term in this sequence so that uh, I just simply put the value of n over there and figure out the value of the term in that sequence. That's the objective. So let's try and analyze this sequence first of all. So and in the previous sessions, if you noticed, we did difference of two consecutive terms and let's try to do the same thing here. So if I find out the first and second term difference, it is three, right? Second term minus first term is three. Then here it is uh, five. And then again, it is 7. And then now it is 9. And this is 11 and so on and so forth. So did you notice something? In the previous case, we had all the difference. So we I'm calling it as layer 1 difference. So the first difference you calculated for this, you know, from the sequence itself. Okay. So these differences uh, were constant in the previous case, right? Where it was linear term uh, but in this case it's not constant but if you go further down let's say take the second layer of difference so if you see this is 2 and this is clearly 2 again and this is 2 right and again another 2 like that so what do we observe we observe that the second layer of difference is constant layer 2 is constant right so it, it gives an indication that if you know the previous case was a linear term though in this case the linear or the term or any generic term can be expressed as a n squared plus b n plus c okay this is what is the understanding right there is a full-fledged proof around this particular thing but we are not going to discuss the proof here we are just trying to implement this what do i say listen to it carefully once again so if you have a sequence whose second layer of difference is coming out to be constant, then that particular sequence, any term can be expressed like this formula, a quadratic function of n, quadratic function of n, right? So tn is a quadratic function of, so you remember we discussed that tn is a function of n. So in this case, the, the function will be quadratic. Okay, how? We will look at it in different session right now. Let's apply it and try to find out a b and c and see that we are able to get a formula for this so now let us say n is equal to 1 so what is n is equal to 1 if you see n is equal to 1 from the sequence if you see this is 2 so let me write 2 and from from our formula if i deploy n is equal to 1 here in these two places i will get t1 as a into 1 square plus b into 1 plus c correct that is a plus b plus c right a plus b plus c is my first equation a plus b by c a plus b plus c and that equals 2 so i can write a plus b is equal to 2 please understand once again first term is 2 clearly no doubt about it no doubt about it and i am assuming that this formula is going to work for every term that means if i deploy n is equal to 1 in this relationship i will get the 
nth term so if n is equal to 1 here put n is equal to 1 in this relationship you will get t1 so t1 from the given formula is a plus b plus c and from the actual value it is 2 so i can equate both of them so from formula it is a plus b plus c and from actual value it is 2 so let us try and let us call it equation number 1 let's go for n is equal to 2 if you see n is equal to 2 from the sequence the number is 5 is it so let us write 5 here 5 and from the formula what will it be it will be a into 2 square plus b into 2 plus c simply so again after simplification you can see this is 4a plus b plus c is equal to 5 from the sequence the second term is 5 from the formula it is not only b 2b sorry i missed a 2 here so this will be 2b correct this is equation number 2 okay but we have three variables so we will not be able to solve for a b and c so let's go for the third n is equal to 3 n is equal to 3 and you can pick any n for that matter n equals to 4 5 whatever the answer or the solution is not going to change so the third number was 10 from the sequence if you see this is 10 and from the formula we will get a into 3 square plus b into 3 plus c so this would imply 9a plus 3b plus c is equal to 10 right from the formula is the LHS from the actual value of the sequence is the RHS so this is equation number three now we have got three equation we can solve for a b and c we have learned that and find the value of a b and c so we will do this operation first 2 minus 1 so that the lone c gets eliminated so if you do this you will get 3a plus b is equal to 3 this can be treated as equation number 4 and do this one 3 minus 2 right this will straight straight away eliminate c so this will give you 5a plus b is equal to 5 10 minus 5 is 5 so this is equation number 5 now can i not eliminate b from 4 and 5 yes so do 5 minus 4 these two you will get 2a is equal to 2 so a becomes 1 b gets cancelled obviously same same coefficient so b gets cancelled a is equal to 1 so this is our result a is equal to 1 but we also need to find out b and c so if you use 4 from 4 from 4 what can we say b is equal to 3 minus 3a correct and a was 1 so 3 minus 3 into 1 is 0 right so b comes out to be 0 and from there if you check equation number 1 equation number 1 was from 1 from 1 and i will write that equation 1 here a plus b plus c was equal to 2 so a is 1 b is 0 so c is equal plus c is equal to 2 so what will c be c is equal to 1 isn't it so hence my friends tn becomes an square right what was tn if you check see this was tn so a b and c i have got so it will be simply n square plus 0 n plus c so tn is this was a n square plus b n plus c now deploy all the values which we found out a was 1 so it is n square 1 times n square plus 0 times n plus 1 c was 1 so hence it is simply n square plus 1 okay let's check whether it is actually true so my general formula is coming out to be tn is equal to n square plus 1 let's go back to the sequence and see whether it is actually true so let me write the sequence here so we are getting tn is equal to n square plus 1 and now check let's say n is equal to 1 so tn from our formula is 2 very correct true n is equal to 2 so tn will be 2 square plus 1 which is 5 that's also correct so all this is so n is equal to 3 if you take tn will be from our formula 3 square plus 1 which is 10 see all of them is matching so do, can't i find out hundredth term very easily so t hundred will be simply what n square plus 1 right this is what the formula is so n is 100 so put 100 square plus 1 so that means 10,000 plus 1 
that is 10001 okay so this is what is the hundredth term without even you know doing any calculation we can or for that matter any one by one operation and finding the next 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 like that instead of that directly i could figure out what is the value of t100 likewise for any any n whether it is 1 lakh 1 million 1 billion whatever you will be able to figure out the nth term in this so what did we learn in this session guys so hence if the second layer of the difference is constant then the nth term will be of this fashion right so keep this in mind so nth term will be a quadratic function if the first layer was constant it will be a linear function and in the next session we'll see that if the um, third layer is also constant right so third layer is constant then it will be a cubic function so i hope you understood this